My name is Jake Vossenkemper, Director of Agronomy and Research here at Liquor Grow. Hi, I'm Katie Hess, Director of Sales and Marketing here at Liquor Grow. Dr. Jake, we're on our Fall Fertilizer Series. Today's topic is potassium. But before we get into that, I looked up on the NOAA website. Yes, you've trained me to look things up. I didn't know you were trainable. You uh. told me you weren't trainable. <laughs> I knew I better know the facts on this one, right? So April 1st to September 1st here in Davenport, uh, it said we had like 11.4 inches of rain. And on average, we have somewhere between 24 and 25 inches of rain during that time period. So we're definitely dry this summer. Um, so let's talk about why we're seeing so much potassium deficiencies out in the field and what folks can do about it as they work into this next crop. Yeah, so let's start by just talking about the simple mechanics of why dry soils affect potassium uptake. Okay, okay. so potassium has to move in the soil solution. In other words, in the soil water. It has to move toward the crop, okay? Mm -hmm. It doesn't move very far, only a few centimeters. It's not nitrate, it doesn't move rapidly with water, but it does diffuse through the soil water, okay? And the reason drought is a problem is you have all these little bitty soil pads or, or particles in the soil. And if, if it gets dry enough that those pads aren't all connected by a water film, then that cuts off the movement of potassium. So in a dry year and dry conditions, you stop or stall the movement of potassium by diffusion in the soil water to the root system. Sure. And that's why in dry soils, in dry years, you see a lot more potassium deficiencies. So Dr. Jake, does it matter if you have more sand, silt, or clay in your soil makeup? Generally, Silt loams and silt loams, silty clay loams, clay loams, you know, they're all going to be affected by this phenomena of, of disconnected uh, water films on soil particles. Sandy soils tend to leach cay. That's a whole other animal. We'll cover that a different time. So, Dr. Jake, let's just jump into this. How much do we need parts per million for cay in the soils to grow a crop? Well, that's a loaded question, Katie, and that's why potassium is so difficult to manage and understand and to know where you need to be because rooting area, soil texture, uh, soil moisture conditions, all those things affect potassium availability. And if you look at many of the university's potassium response curves, there's a curve, but it generally looks like a scatter plot. In other words, you know, if you have above 180, 200 part per million of potassium, generally you've maximized yields. But you know, sometimes you can maximize yields at 160 parts per million of K or 140 parts per million of K. But if it rains every other day and you have plenty of soil moisture, you can get by with a lot lower K concentrations. Okay, so, but generally speaking, if you're using the build and maintain approach, the rule of thumb is you need above 180 parts per million of K. Okay, so, you know, you love the sufficiency um, approach to fertilizer. How does that work? Yes, I'm a big fan of the sufficiency approach with K, particularly in non-secure lease situations, you know, fields you may not know if you're going to be farming in the future, right? Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of the sufficiency approach, particularly in those situations. So what can you do to manage K more effectively, you know, using the sufficiency approach? So it's all about feeding the crop and not feeding the soil. So simply put, you can band soil potassium. Banding on its own right can have an effect on potassium avail availability. And that's because in high shrink swell soils or, or soils that are high in clay content, particularly two to one clays or smectitic clays, you might hear them called. What happens is, is you can, you have all these clay layers that are, are, that are stacked on top of one another. And when it gets dry, those clay layers can trap potassium inside potassium is in the soil or fertilizer potassium. So banding K on its own right can help reduce the amount of that fertilizer that's exposed to all those clay layers, right? So that's one thing you can do. The second thing you can do is you can apply nitrogen and phosphorus with the potassium. And that's because we know that, that nitrogen and phosphorus, when roots find dense patches of nitrogen and phosphorus, roots proliferate or another another way of saying is that roots explore those areas they invest a lot of resources in those areas of NNP mm -hmm. but if the K is applied with it the root system will also explore the K we will show a figure from a USD ARS study where they show this interaction in real time so that's the second thing you can do the third thing you can do is you can use something like our exact strip technology okay so when we start talking about trying to build K levels, 
for context here, if you were if you were to broadcast applied K fertilizer 100 pounds, you would change the salt test level if you incorporated that potassium to a six inch depth by approximately 11 part per million. Okay. If you were to use something like our exact strip technology, and let's say that you band applied that fertilizer on roughly an eight inch wide band, roughly, and you incorporated it to a six inch depth, you would change the soil test concentration in that area by 42 part per million. So that's a way to shortcut the system and artificially inflate the potassium levels in the area that you're gonna plant into. And in a drought, in dry conditions or in low potassium situations, that is really important to artificially inflate the area where the bulk of the root system is and make that uh, potassium concentration much higher in that zone. And this might not be for every acre you use, but if you're soil sampling and you're finding some really low levels, this might be a way to kind of get yourself back to where you need so Absolutely. you can grow some good yields. Yes, yes. Okay, what else about potassium? I just can't overemphasize enough, you know, Having good potassium levels or using strategies to make potassium more, more efficient, I can't overemphasize enough how much that can help in drought conditions. I mean, Katie, in my research plots this year, I'm not kidding you. I mean, I, I 30, 40, 50 bushel, I think is gonna be pretty easy to pull off when, when you added potassium versus when you didn't have potassium in this drought year. I'll also put a figure to a university study showing the dramatic effects that potassium has, particularly in a dry, dry year. Well, thanks for being here with us today, folks, and hope harvest is going well in your area. Stay tuned. Next week, we're going to talk about sulfur. Stay in the know with Liquor Grow.